Panelist Podcast. The Panelist Podcast. Panelist Podcast. Kyle here with Dimitri and Pierre. I'm not letting them say their own names because they can't handle that, apparently. <laughs> We're talking about a bunch of things today, but the main topic is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, Mutant Mayhem. But first, the news. The news. The news. So we all know that Disney Plus will be having Daredevil return and Daredevil born again. But so is Punisher. Okay. You know who's not returning? Iron Fist. Well, no, not him either. But Foggy. Foggy's not returning. <laughs> and neither is Karen. They should just not do it. So where do you see this news? <sighs> if it's not coming from me, it's fake news. All of the comic book news sites are actually trustworthy, unlike us. Like actual dot coms okay. with the word comic book in the name. But they announced purposely Punisher first and then dialed back. And five, ten minutes later came out more news where Deborah Ann Wall and... And Eldon Henson will not be reprising their roles as Foggy and Karen. You know, Daredevil's two main supporting characters. But there is also a slight rumor that Rosario Dawson might return. Maybe she wants to have a little, you know. Okay. Will it be in the Hell's Kitchen? I have no idea. I mean, that's the only reason why I would accept that they would not get them back however they can. Daredevil, the last time we saw him, he's in San Francisco with mm-hmm. She-Hulk. Where is it going to be? That's a good point. He might not be in Hell's Kitchen. You got me thinking now, both of you. What if it's a new persona, as in that one time he was like kind of a villain and ran the hand and had the black and red suit and basically had like a ninja army and lived underground? Interesting. I can't see him going that quickly into that. Maybe it'll end with that, but he just started his like quote unquote life. Oh, now he's an evil villain. Any chance that Electra might be returning? Piggyback off of Sadarsky's run, throw Daredevil in jail, and Electra could take over as Daredevil. My only issue with that is I'm not a huge fan of the Electra character they portrayed thus far, but this is also not Netflix anymore and gonna have a lighter tone, so nothing against the actor but maybe they recast her completely yeah i think they should possibly now do you two think that this is daredevil from netflix or is this just a different daredevil just a variant mcu variant let's say have we gotten any of that like of them giving us new versions of characters and they stay in the main storyline of the mcu something that was non-mcu and now it is mcu outside of professor x who was seen in a different world like a different multiverse so that doesn't really count i would say hang this whole thing with quantum mania that Seven wasn't points. supposed to happen right kang was supposed to not be in that that whole quantum realm it wasn't supposed to happen that's our theory and let's we're living piggy- with it let's piggyback yeah. off that and to your point what if everything that we're getting now like Daredevil, his whole past has been rewritten because of the events of Quantum Mania. All those people that he had in his past might not be those same people anymore. Which would just allow them to recast everybody. I don't love that at all. I'd rather just take a variant, in my opinion. Well, it could be a variant. I guess not necessarily a variant, but maybe it's just not the life that he had before. It's Daredevil, the actor that we know, but it's not the same Daredevil that had that whole past. It just happens to be the same actor that people love. Yeah. We get reintroduced to different people. It's definitely possible because eventually Eventually, they're going to redo the Defenders. They're not going to just ignore that forever. Wouldn't this fix, going off of your King idea, if they have this event happen at the time it's supposed to happen and they line it up, couldn't this erase the last movie we got with Thor because it was so bad? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Like This whole multiverse thing, it's such an easy cop-out now for them to just put out movies, pump them out, whether they're good or bad, and then they could just rewrite them. Like Obviously, they can't just churn out shitty movies. Eventually, it'll burn out quicker, but it allows them a little bit of room for air. And I think introducing that to Star Wars and DC's doing that now where they're rewriting it with Flashpoint, it just allows you to turn out more things. On a money aspect, it makes sense. Always money with you. Unfortunately. Speaking of money and movies and movies being made just to grab money that aren't going to be that good. You know that universe that Morbius exists in? The Sony-verse? Well, they finally said who Sydney Sweeney's going to be. She is going to be Spider-Woman, but not the Spider-Woman we're used to. The Julia Carpenter Spider-Woman, which is technically the second one, even though all of the news articles are showing <laughs> Jessica Drew. That's uh, two points to Ravenclaw. Which that one's actually pretty cool in both Ultimate and 616 universes, but we won't go into that. So yeah, yeah we are getting Spider-Woman and it's Sydney Sweeney and yeah. Actually, one of our most popular episodes was an episode I named Sydney Sweeney. I'm not sure why. Interesting. It wasn't that great of an episode. Anyway, I spent a lot of money recently. I just wanted to share with you guys. My wife actually caught me due to a phone call. So I bought a Peach Momoko Miles Morales number one variant, 9.8. They're going for a little over 300 at that grade. I got it for a little under 300. I think I did pretty good. Nice early Sunday auction. In the midst of that, I had also sent out a request to purchase a page.
Page from Poison Ivy. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with the artist from Poison Ivy. I cannot pronounce his name. I'm going to try. Marcio Takara. Okay. He's fantastic. I've liked him for a long time. When he was on Poison Ivy, I said to myself, this is another excuse to go all in and buy every single variant, which I've been doing. But since Poison Ivy has now turned into an ongoing, I was more inclined to have a bigger piece of it. And I bought one of his pages for $300. And I got a phone call at the dinner table from the art distributor. And he was like, hey, I sent you an email and you didn't respond and like pay. And I'm like, I didn't get an email. And then he starts talking more and more. And my wife is just looking at me like, what? Did you buy? Nice, I'm pretty nice. excited though. The page, just to explain it, is basically the villain holding Poison Ivy above the ground and choking her. That full body kind of view. That was a good price for that. I like it. You have a lot of Poison Ivy stuff. And one day, when I can't afford it, my whole left leg, a giant Poison Ivy. There you and go. It'll be cool like you, Pierre. Yeah. Cool like you. Yeah. That's <laughs> what I'm thinking. <laughs> That'd be sick. All right. Let's talk about the main topic. Main topic. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Mutant Mayhem. Animated. Spectacular trailer dropped. Really a teaser, if we're being honest. But I guess first, let's talk about the cast. It's a pretty stacked cast. Yeah. I mean, just naming the all-stars that we know. Seth Rogen as Bebop. We have Jackie Chan as Master Splinter. Sick. We have Giancarlo Esposito. We have John Cena. Ice Cube. Paul Rudd. Post Malone's in it. Maya Rudolph. (laughs) Hannibal Burris. And that's just to name a few. And you just have main cast of the Ninja Turtles, which is just a few kids that are doing a great job as far as I can tell from the teaser. So let's start with that. What do you think of the voices for the Ninja Turtles? Because obviously they went younger and went heavy on the money for the cameo characters and a little lower with actual children actors. Do you like them this young? Yeah, it's not live action. It's animated. So I think you can go young. You know, it's really going in on the teenage aspect of it for the first time. Jackie Chan as as Master Splinter, am I right? That's gonna be cool. No, I like it. I don't think they said who Shredder would be yet, and I like I that. I think that's a big yeah mystery that they're purposely holding. I almost think that he's not gonna be in it, and he will be an after credit scene. That's my guess. I'm saying it now. They should. I can like, see that as a thing. Like, they use other characters. He's too main of a villain to, like, be going after young kids. I feel like that just, like, and I'm saying young kids, like young turtles. They have to fight, like, their level bosses first. What I like about it is that it gives them room to grow. The theories I've seen so far is all about toys it's like well if we make them really young and they grow up a little bit in each movie that's a new mold and a new design every single year for four turtles so that's four brand new action figures minimum every year of just the standard ones really think about it all of those 80s cartoons had one purpose and that was to sell action figures every single 80s cartoon was based off of the action figure idea first so it makes sense yeah and the fact that it's clearly heavily based off of the 80s animated series i mean even from the belts like their belt buckles have their initials on it. The trailer opens with a slowed down version of the 80s animated music. I mean, it's almost like a reboot of that, not necessarily an adaptation of the comic. It's a new modern adaptation of the cartoon, which they're drastically different. So it actually makes sense. The last Ronin comic mm. book. I think I might buy it. You're a little late. Did you see? Well, I don't think I'm late. It might come eventually, maybe. I don't know if it's going to come in Do this we have world? potential to do that one day? So we're being introduced to them as children and you're already planning their demise for financial gains. Mm, yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah, yeah, but that's what I'm doing. Yep. All right. The art is really what got me because honestly, when you told me about this, I was like, it's a kid's movie. What are you talking about? Like, mm. And when I watched the trailer and watched the art, that's actually what pulled me in. It felt a lot like Into the Spider-Verse. So that cartoony kind of like trippy art style, like moving art. And Almost like claymation style. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. And putting that to like maybe doing like a Last Ronin movie would be kind of a cool idea. The way I would see it is if they did a sequel down the road that had to do with time travel and they met the last Ronin and was like, what happened to the rest of us? That kind of thing yeah. I could see. Everyone's trying to find a world they can create and branch off of. No, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter. True. Franchise everything. That's all it is. An old Nature Turtles video game. I think it was for the NES. They think it's like Turtles in Time. They could do something like that as like a spinoff or something. I haven't kept up with the comics, but I know that there's a lot of different stories that you can mm-hmm pull from. There's a lot so. more turtles. There's new turtles yeah. that come after the last Ronin. Last Ronin's not canon. The comics are kind of violent. The animated shows haven't 
been. There's some that have been more mature. There's a vast multiverse of turtles that they've even crossed them over in one of the shows. But yeah, I think this is definitely geared for kids, but going to be like Spider-Verse where it's going to be beloved by all. And you're very close with the animation. You ever see Mitchell and the Machines, a Netflix movie? So similar kind of art style. Someone who worked on that project heavily is on this movie. And that movie was Mm. highly revered and only didn't go to theaters because of the pandemic. So this has much, much potential to be an ongoing, fantastic new spin, just like Spider-Verse is. I'm really excited just to go into complaints because, you know, I got them. Raphael wasn't angry enough. And I've always found myself, I don't want to say relating to him, but like he sees that people suck and everyone else suck. He's kind of the leader. I relate to him and he wasn't very relatable to me in this trailer. He wasn't angry enough or telling people what to do enough. So I think they could build on that. I need them to for my own representation on the screen. I almost think they have to. I think he's too young to be angry. He's growing into that. He has to grow into Mm -hmm. it. I think the competition aspect between him and Leonardo will be enough to do that. Do you feel like they kind of were hinting that already? Because he was messing around with Leo's sword and you can kind of see Leo in the background like making faces. If they do something like that where like just Raphael uses his weapon against him. And you know what was really smart with the trailer too? They showed Donatello get stabbed. The fact that he has a weapon sticking out of his leg tells us it's not going to be so PG that it's unenjoyable. One little Easter egg though, my last thing on this trailer. Pierre, I know you're going to really like it. So Donatello's staff has a Jujutsu Kaisen sticker. You know the guy with the white hair when he takes off his blindfold and everything goes nuts? What's his name? Satoru Gojo? Yeah, so Gojo is a sticker on Donatello's staff. Like, how cool is that? Okay. That's pretty cool. That is really cool. So right there, even that, that's something that we would pick up on. That's not something kids would pick up on because that show is not a kid's show at all. Parent, don't let them watch it. (laughs) Unless you're cool. (laughs) Then you let them watch it. Yeah. Any final thoughts on the Ninja Turtle trailer? There's just so much that they can do. Easily could be a trilogy. Could be more if they want. I want all the characters too. Like, I want Slash. I want, what is it? Super Shredder with the ooze. With the ooze. I want all of it. Yeah, I want to see, you know, the robot turtle. I want Tokar and Razor from the movies. Like, Mm. Shredder creating his own, I guess, mutant creatures. I want to see Slash. It's ironic that this trailer came out, though, because I didn't realize it was coming out, and we actually were just playing the Ninja Turtle Nintendo Switch game. I don't know why you make it seem like I got to play it. I never got to play it. Okay, well, you didn't get to play it, but Uncle Mike got to play it, and Uncle Mike is really bad. Can I just say? We could have beat that level. He somehow made it harder to win. Well, when can I come over and we can all play? Just, I've invited yeah. you and you don't answer me. And then three days later, you just send me something else as if I never texted you in the first place. So <laughs> when you respond to my text, that's when. I get busy at work. Uh-huh. I do the same thing to my mom. It's a going trend. I know. Because me and her talk about it. All right. But what yeah. do you have next for us, Kyle, after so, this awesome trailer? Next on the agenda, after the awesome trailer, Marvel somehow acquired the publication rights to make comic books for Planet of the Apes, Aliens, Predator, and Avatar. Mm-hmm. And the crazy part is they're not even putting a real Marvel logo on it, probably because they're not putting great talent on it because it's just money grabs. There's actually a purple banner that says 20th Century. Oh, wow. I really love Planet of the Apes, so I'm hoping that the way they presented thus far isn't like exactly that and just like money grab just to like use the titles they own and they put some real, you know, you can't just put anyone on Planet of the Apes. You have to put someone on it that has seen every single movie more than once, that hates the Mark Wahlberg movie, that has possibly even read the book, has possibly watched the movie in French with subtitles. They need to be a diehard nut with Planet of the Apes. Like, own the Blu-ray box set where it's like an actual, like, head of, you know, one of the soldier apes. You sound like Can't. like you might be one of these nuts. Yeah, bit, you do. A little bit. Do you want to be on Planet of the Apes? I would love to write Planet of the Apes. Can I just say, I would absolutely love to write Planet of the Apes. I... No, no. You want to be one of the apes. What type of ape? Don't answer it. I already know. An orangutan. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I was going to say, I don't want to be one just because I, I know which one I would be. I and all the orangutan were nope, asked you've been typecast that you're only allowed to be an orangutan. in orangutan in every it. single film you can be the first good effects. one it could be your own solo story okay you guys don't even know about the underground people with the mind reading i didn't even know there's a mark mom. Wahlberg movie never watched that one i think i've seen it actually they never watched funny. anything mark Wahlberg is in like just disown anything he's touched let's do that damn that's <laughs> that's where i'm at with him even though it should be the same ezra miller but we're all going to see flash there's also going to be alien comics which we've already had for a bit 
with Philip Kennedy Johnson, which has been really good. Predator, that's probably going to spiral out of praise, success. And then Avatar Comics, who knows what they'll do with that. But that's a whole planet, so they could really just do spinoffs and have nothing to do with the main and just solely be about the Navi. I was going to say the blue people, but I remember the name in the last second. Wait, that Avatar? I thought it was Avatar with Aang. No, Aang's Avatar legally has to be called Avatar The Last Airbender. Even though gotcha. Avatar came out after The Last Airbender. I thought they were buying that too, though. Nickelodeon owns that. So just like they own the rights to Ninja Turtles when it comes to movies and TV. Yeah, so. Dragon Ball Z, don't forget, Disney bought that too. Listen, I'm not like a fan like you are, but i just concerned for you. Disney bought <laughs> a lot of things, and that one I don't know if it'll ever translate. Yeah, because the hair. You just make another cartoon out of it and make it cooler. No, you like put that one. On it. Oh, yes. Yeah. Put Mamba oh, on yeah. it. That thing I didn't watch. You're so behind us. <laughs> so many good things. Are right, we going to talk about how Creed 3 came out as oh. the highest grossing sports movie like ever and a lot of the fight sequence in mm. Creed 3 were heavily influenced by anime oh so I they did, asked him did, yeah. right they asked him like you know would you want to work on Dragon Ball Z he was like of course and he, you know went into detail of like different anime that he's a big fan of so that's something that would be cool the scene that I saw was a boxing scene go figure and they basically had hit each other in the face at the exact same moment and right that moment is like a freeze frame from a Dragon Ball Z episode of Goku hitting somebody in the face yeah Jonathan Majors, he should have his own museum. I think they should just put up a museum for him. I know he's only come out with a few movies. But everything's but perfect. <laughs> right. I think we have like one of the best stars of our generation. But what a cool person, too. You ever see that he carries around a mug everywhere he goes? Right. Oh, yeah. And it's like his mom said something to him. And this is a reminder of the phrase. So it's not even like a significant mug just to remind him of that. No one can fill up your cup or empty your cup. I fill my own cup. Now, if anyone can, else yeah, said that, I, like, I would make fun of them. But because it's him, it's the fucking coolest thing ever. <laughs> I'm going to start carrying a cup. I've decided. Also in Marvel News, apparently Kevin Feige might be moving up as like president of the Marvel Studios, I believe. Entertainment, something, something. Yeah. So he's moving up. And because he's moving up, the person who might get his spot is John Favreau. Mm. Wow. Iron Man 1 was John Favreau. Yeah. Mandalorian still thriving. Mandalorian. Not that either of you have watched yeah. it. I've watched episode one, which I will throw a little one of those in there. The beginning <laughs> scene where Grogu is in the spaceship and they're mm -hmm. just in like hyperdrive and he mm -hmm. sees like tentacle monsters. I don't know what they are. Like squids. He gets nervous and goes into Mandalorian's arms. People are saying that might be teasing Ezra Bridger actually showing up. Well, the cool thing about just the Ezra Bridger part is that Ezra Bridger, last time we saw him, he disappeared with Thrawn. Ahsoka's coming. That is true. We're probably going to yeah. see that at some point. I think that might actually be a teaser to it. And I also did buy $600 worth of comic books that I didn't mean to because I've won Shit. two auctions that I didn't want to. I found one comic book. I threw it in an offer and then I found the other one that was more exclusive. I bought that one and then I got a notification that I won the other one that my offer was accepted. So then I got both. We've all done that. But first appearance of Ezra Bridger. Good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like it was a little expensive. So, it's always good to do yeah. if you have an idea of something. Right. Rumors. Dakota Johnson is rumored to be the top choice for Invisible Woman. Now you're saying to yourselves, who the fuck is Dakota Johnson? 50 oh, we know shades of gray. Yay. That's what you're worried about? Dakota Johnson's in the new Spider-Woman. Is she? She's Madam Web or some version of her. Oh, and this yeah. is a terrible yeah. idea. I don't like this. She shouldn't do She's it. Madam More Web. so. If she accepted that role, she shouldn't be accepting the Invisible Woman role. Or they shouldn't be contending <laughs> no. her. Oh, pick one. You can get both. It's not going to be her. It's going to be, what's her name? Blunt and Chris Goss yeah, but the guy from you, I would like to see him as Reed Richards because I feel like he would do justice to the maker eventually. Mm. Like he could play both roles. He can be that nice guy and everything. We've seen it in you and then be twisted and fucked up, but so, like kind of like menacing about it. This is what you would call parallel structure of Panelite's podcast. Pierre has once again found a way for financial gain to be the main reason of all of his opinions. Now he wants Mr. Fantastic to turn to the maker so he can sell that first appearance for profits. Battle with podcast. Battle with podcast. And you're wearing a right. turtle hoodie. No, I did it on purpose. That's a fire hoodie. Can you stand up? No, 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 no. Don't, <laughs> don't fuck All right. up. At the end of this, you're going to show everyone your hoodie. All right. Panelist podcast, not All to right. be confused so, with the nudes. 
that Dimitri <laughs> might start taking. <laughs> Coming soon. And all his podcast. Tatered off. A little tater tot. Tater tot. Tater tot. <laughs> oh, no. No, he's spiraling. He's thinking about tater tots. <laughs> no, Kyle. <laughs> he hasn't eaten it. And all his podcast. I think of his splinter and then like his little henchman. Sure. What did I say? Splinter? Oh, I think of splinter. Do it again. All right. <laughs> I said it again. <laughs> and all his podcast. You put too many in your mouth? You put a little too many in your mouth? That's what you get. <laughs> Handle his podcast. Yeah, I'm looking for the hot tamale that I dropped. No, no, we know what you're doing. I just didn't want to. Oh, shit. Yeah, you got to pick them up. The dogs can't have hot tamales, it. right? She just so. have diarrhea. That's fine. <laughs> no, that's got to be awful. <laughs> hot tamales are good for everyone, though. <laughs>